This is my children, you shall hear. The midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April, 75, hardly a man is not alive. Who remembers that famous day of year? He said to his friend, If the British march by land or sea from town to night, hang on turn aloft in the belfry arch of the North Church, towers the signal of light. One if by land, two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be, ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. Then he said good night with a muffled oar, silently rode to the Charlestown shore. Just as the moon rose over the bay, where swinging wide at her moorings lay. The Somerset British man of war, a phantom ship with each mast and spar, across the moon like a prison bar, and a huge black hulk that was magnified by its own reflection in the tide. Meanwhile, his friend through the alley and street wanders and watches with eager ears, till in the silence around him hears the muster of men at the barrack door the sound of arms and the tramp of feet and the measured tread of the grenadiers marching down to their boats on the shore. Then he climbed to the tower of the old North Church by the wooden stairs with stealthy tread to the belfry chamber overhead and startled the pigeons from their perch on the sombre rafters that round him made masses of moving shapes and shade. By the trembling ladder, steep and tall, to the highest window in the wall, where he paused and listened to look down a moment on the roofs of the town and the midnight flowing over all. Beneath in the churchyard lay the dead in the night encampment on the hill, wrapped in silence so deep and still that he could hear in a silent tread the watchful night wind as it went creeping along from tent to tent and seeming to whisper all is well a moment only he feels the spell of the place in the hour and the secret dread of the only be fry and the dead for suddenly all his thoughts are bent on the shadowy something far away where the river widens to meet the bay a line of black bends and floats on the rising tide like a bridge of boats. Meanwhile, impatient to mount and ride, booted and spurred with a heavy stride, on the opposite on the opposite shore walked Paul Revere. Now he patted his horse's hot side. Now he gazed at the landscape far and near. Then impetuous stamped the earth, and turned and tightened his saddle girth. But mostly he watched with eager search the belfry tower of the old North Church. As it rose above the graves on the hill, and lo, as he looked on the belfry's height, a glimmer and then a gleam of light. He springs to the saddle, the bridle he turns, but lingers and gazes till, full on his sight, a second light in the belfry burns. A hurry of hoofs in a village street. A shape in the moonlight, a bulk in the dark, and beneath from the pebbles, and passing a spark, struck out by a steed flying fearless and fleet. That was all, and yet the, through the gloom and the light, the fate of a nation was riding that night, and the spark struck out by the steed in that his flight, kindled the land into the flame with its heat. He has left the village and mountain to steed. And beneath him, tranquil and broad and deep, in the mystic meeting the ocean tides, and under the alder and that skirt its edge, now soft on sand, now loud on the edge, it heard the tramp of his steed as he rides. It was twelve by the village clock when he crossed the bridge into Medford Town. He heard the crowing of the cock and the barking of the former dog, and felt the damp river fog. It rises after the sun goes down. It was one by the cl village clock when he galloped to Le into Lexington. He saw the gilded weathercock swim in the moonlight as he passed. And the meeting house windows, black and bare, gazed at him with spectral gear. As if he, as, as they... As if they already stood aghast, 
at the bloody work they would look upon. It was two by, by the village clock when he came to the bridge on Concord Town. He heard the beating of the flock and the twitter of the birds among the trees, and he felt the breath of the morning breeze blowing over the meadow of brown, and one was safe and asleep in his bed. Who, who at bridge would be first to fall, who that day would be lying dead, pierced by a British musket ball. You know the rest in the books you have read how the British regulars fired and fled, how the farmers gave them ball for ball from behind each fence and farm yard, farm yard wall, chasing the redcoats down the lane, then crossing the fields to emerge again, under the trees at the turn of the road, and only pausing to fire and load. So through the night rode Paul Revere, and so through the night went his cry of alarm. To every Middlesex village and farm, a cry of defiance and not of fear, a voice in the darkness, a knock at the door, and a word that shall echo forevermore. We're born on the night wind of the past, through all our history to the last. In the hour of darkness and peril and need, the people will waken and listen to hear the hurrying of beats of that steed and the midnight message of Paul Revere. Then impetuous stamped the earth and turned and tightened his saddle girth, but mostly he watched with eager search the belfry tower of the old North Church.